This is Coding Math, Episode 49, Matrix Math, Part 2. In Episode 48, we covered the basics of matrix math, or some of the basics. To recap, we went over storing a 2D point in a matrix, adding and multiplying matrices, how to create special matrices to rotate, scale, and translate a point. If you're clear on all that stuff, let's move on. It's time to put this into code. Now, if you look at the API for the 2D rendering context in Canvas, you'll see a transform and set transform method. These take six parameters each, usually named A through E. Up to now, it may have seemed somewhat confusing what these parameters actually represent, but now you should at least have an idea. But if you haven't guessed, those six parameters are these six elements of the matrix we created to combine scaling and translation or rotation and translation. SX, 0, 0, SY, TX, and TY. Or cosine, sine, sine, cosine, TX, and TY. Other systems have similar transform methods for applying 2D transforms. In fact, we'll also look at the CSS version a little later in this video. The parameters map to the matrix like this. A, B, C, D, and then E, F on the side. That may seem a little odd, but sometimes the last two parameters are called TX and TY, which makes a lot more sense when mapped to the matrix. I much prefer this notation because it makes it more obvious that the last two parameters are the translation. Sometimes you'll also see the parameters described as a matrix like this. Again, that last row is unnecessary and makes sense in certain contexts, but can be ignored for simple 2D transformations and really just confuses things. For Canvas, setting a transform affects all content drawn on the Canvas thereafter. So let's code it up. I'm going to experiment using JSBin here, as it allows for instant feedback during the coding process rather than switching back and forth between different screens. First, I'll destroy a 100 by 100 pixel square right at 0, 0. And you can see that right off. Nothing surprising there. Now let's apply a matrix. Before drawing, I say context set transform 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Nothing changed. Why? Well, the matrix that we've passed in is called the identity matrix because it doesn't transform anything at all. You see the TX and TY are both 0, so there's no translation going on. If we look at A through B as a scaling matrix, then the scale factors are both 1, so no real scaling is going on. Or if we look at it as a rotation matrix, 1 is the cosine of 0, and 0 is the sine of 0 degrees. So we have 0 rotation going on. Passing in this matrix to set transform has the effect of removing any existing transformations that have been applied to the canvas. So let's do some translation. Pass in some numbers for TX and TY to move it on the X and Y axis. And that worked. The square is now translated. Now let's scale it by passing in 3 for SX and 2 for SY. Now it's scaled 3 times on the X axis and 2 on the Y. To rotate, we need to pass in the sine and cosine of an angle. So let's set an angle variable to math pi divided by 4, which is 45 degrees. Then we'll say sine equals math sine angle and cosine equals math cosine angle. Now we can pass matrix parameters of cosine sine minus sine cosine plus tx and ty. And we're translated and rotated. Now earlier I mentioned two methods, set transform and transform. We've been using set transform and it's pretty straightforward. It sets the transformation matrix of the canvas. If there happen to be any transformations applied previously, it clears this out before applying the transformation you pass to it. The transform method, however, simply applies a new transformation on top of any existing one. So if I call transform after drawing the first rectangle and pass in 1, 0, 0, 1, 100, 100, it will keep the existing transformation, but translate it by the given amounts on both axes. Now if I draw another rectangle, it's in a different place than the first one and still rotated. It may be confusing why it is where it is, but remember, the entire canvas is rotated 45 degrees. So when we translate on the x-axis, we're going this way, and then on the y-axis, down here. Now if I change that call to set transform, it clears out the rotation in previous translation, and all we get is the new translation, moved down 100-100 from the top left corner of the canvas. Okay, the last issue is rotation and scaling at the same time. 
We use the same transform or set transform method, but we need to pass in some different numbers. What we actually need to do is create a scaling matrix and then create a separate rotation matrix and then multiply those together. This will give us a new single matrix that we can use to scale, rotate, and with the addition of TX and TY, translate. An important decision regarding this is the order you want to do these two actions in. Do you want to scale and then rotate, or rotate and then scale? It makes a big difference. We'll do it both ways and see what we get. First, let's rotate and scale. So we have our rotation matrix on the left, and then we'll multiply it by the scaling matrix on the right. We multiply the first row and get cosine times SX plus sine times zero, and cosine times zero plus sine times SY. Second row is minus sine times SX plus cosine times zero, and minus sine times zero plus cosine times SY. This reduces down to cosine times SX and sine times SY and minus sine times SX and cosine times SY. It's kind of like a tongue twister. This is the new matrix we need to apply, A through D, along with TX and TY, of course. Back in the code, I'll make SX and SY variables and set them both to one for now. And I'll plug in the new matrix values. No change yet, but let's change SY to two. Now the shape is twice as tall. Set SY to 0 0.5 and it's squashed. Back to one and we can change SX to two and then 0 0.5 and see it work on that axis as well. And hopefully you can get a feel for the fact that the rectangle was rotated and then after the rotations, that resulting diamond shape was scaled on the X and Y axis. Now let's switch the order. So we have the scale matrix first and then the rotation matrix. See if you can work out the multiplication on your own. Pause now if you want to try it. Okay, I'll just write down the answer here. SX times cosine, SX times sine, SY times minus sine, SY times cosine. You see that unlike normal multiplication, with matrix multiplication, the order really matters. We get a very different result. Back in the code, I'll change the matrix parameters to reflect that order change. And we change SY to two. Now we have something very different. Now change SY to 0 0.5. Then SY back to one and SX to two. Then 0 0.5. And can you visualize what's going on here? What we've done is taken what was a square and scaled it on one of the two axes. This gives us a rectangle. Then we rotate that rectangle. Quite different from the first example when we rotated a square and then scaled the result. So now you know the basics on how to apply 2D transformation matrices. It's also possible to skew a shape with a different kind of matrix, but I'll leave you to investigate that on your own. There are good uses for it, but they're far less common than what we just covered. Most any other graphic system that allows transformations such as rotation, scaling, and translation will also have a way to apply a raw matrix like this, and it will probably work very similarly. For example, CSS has its own transformation functions, which allow you to rotate, scale, and translate DOM objects. And what do you know, there's also a transform matrix function that takes six parameters. Here I've just set up a div with the text hello world in it, and we can see that on the page. And I've added some CSS for the div element. I know you'd never do this for all divs like this, but for the sake of ease of demonstration, this is fine. I've bumped up the font size and made it bolder so we can see it better. Now I'll set the transform property to the matrix function. And I'll give it the identity matrix 100100. No change. But if I change the last two parameters to 200, 200, what do you know? We have a translation without any JavaScript even. Let's scale it two times on the y-axis. That worked. Set it back to one and scale it on the x-axis. Yep, it scales. How about rotation? Now in plain old CSS, we can use variables or do calculations. So I've pre-calculated the sine and cosine of 45 degrees, which 
both happen to be right around 0 0.707. So I'll plug in 0 0.707, 707. Don't forget the C is minus sign, so it's minus 07707, whatever. And finally, 0 0.707. And yes, we do have a rotation. I won't beat this to death. It works exactly like the JavaScript version, but can be applied to any element on a page. Neat, huh? Now you've mastered the magical matrix. In the next video, we'll be applying everything we learned in these two videos, plus the previous video on weighted random, to make some really neat fractal images.